Welcome back everybody, got a review video and it's Mizuno, it's driver, it's the STZ220 and the STX220. So we know Mizuno are making some really good drivers in the last few years, but can they sort of edge more market share over the big brands in the driver category for 2022? We're gonna take a look at these drivers and see how they perform. Right, okay, so we're gonna kick things off. As I say, we've got two heads, STZ, which is the weight very central, a little bit more of their low spinning neutral sort of driver. And then we've got the STX, a little bit more of a draw bias. So that weighted screw starts going the heel, giving a little bit more that draw bias for maybe that player who needs that help. So we're gonna start off with the STZ. We will hit some with the X a little bit later, just show you some numbers of maybe what that is also doing. So as always, first instinct down by the golf ball, it's a Mizuno driver. And it hasn't changed really as from the looks from above than what we've seen in previous models, which I think is a good thing. So this looks absolutely stunning. It sits beautifully square for me. Black gloss head with that black section. We've got the carbon gray at the back split the two cores. I quite like that. It's, 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 it's a very, very appealing. And what's quite cool though, we've just got the little Z logo now, which is in the center at the back edge. Very subtle, but it's just there. And when you see the X version, which is the draw, that logo of the X then just moves a little bit into the heel to indicate that sort of more heel weight, which I think is quite a nice little touch. So it looks superb down by the golf ball. We've got that Mizuno Running Bird logo as a subtle little lime A black face. Oh, and that's an absolute bullet to start off with. That's flown. It looks like it has. Yeah, that looks pretty long. So, yeah, 112.7 club head. Good ball speed, just short 164. Good launch for me. Great spin. 285 carry. That's a really good sort of start. Some really good numbers there. So, talk a little bit about technology, what's happening. So, now it's 40% more carbon in this club head. So, carbon is a big word for 2022 with a lot of brands, isn't it? More carbon now, less titanium. So, obviously, that's creating weight saving repositioning that in different parts of the club. And where Mizuno have put it is in this back weight, at this, uh, in the back edge of the golf club. You can see this weighted screw, 20 grams. That's double the weight that they had previously. So the weight saving the carbon, repositioning sort of deep and back in the club, helping with that forgiveness, that increased MOI. Yet it's still a little bit of a, more of a low spin is what Mizuno are promoting. Oh, again, that's a good ball flight. I tell you what, that is a fantastic sound off that club face. Really good, solid sound. 165, just short of ball speed. Again, spin at that 2300. Some really good numbers out the, out the gun. Oh, and again, touch up that left side of that one particular shot. But the strike was good. I'd be taking that most days on that golf course. Absolutely. 165, see 2100 and a half spin. 282 really good sort of smash there and again some really nice height peak height get the launch around 11 12 areas great for me that spin around that sort of just all that 2000 superb not too low not too sort of diving out the sky but then we're just not ballooning which is interesting with that pulled or extra weight at the back we always sometimes associate that higher launch and higher spin don't we yet i think we've seen this again a lot of brands is the getting that weight back increasing that MOI yet controlling that spin which I think is a really good formula for a lot of golfers to gain a little bit more yardage but as we know you know extra yardage isn't everything is it you know we want that element of that control those miss hits if we can increase that MOI we can make those miss hits just that little bit more be or better hopefully we can hit more fairways Okay, that's a little bit low toe, just peeling a bit up that right hand side, definitely felt that. That ball speed's not bad there, considering. Yeah, so we're gonna see that spin go up, a little bit lower in the face strike, but it's not ridiculous there, 2700 for that sort of low strike. I'm, I'm, you know, I'm happy with that, that's, you know, if you're gonna miss it to the right, you tend to see that spin go up a little bit more. It's stalling a little bit, that's not a bad thing, because again, trying to keep the accuracy there is good. You know, 277 lose a little bit of distance, but not a lot really. Now I've got this uh, nine and a half head just set at nine and a half, but obviously with the Mizuno neck sleeve there, we've got tons of adjustability, both up and down in loft, as well as changing line angle to really sort of dial in or suit a certain shot shape or a shot direction that a certain player is trying to hit, or maybe trying to prevent, prevent a little bit. Okay, now I'm testing that club face. That was very toe, very toe. Could feel that, could feel the twist. Again, that ball speed is pretty good. Spin dropping, hitting toe, pull spin off, we know that. I got enough launch on that, so that's still 283 on the carry. That's, that was a worst strike I've hit today. 
yet really, really good and stable and pretty straight hitting as well. So Mizuno have got what they call a Z-axis design on the sole, so evenly distributing the weight across the heel and the toe area. Again, really helping to stabilise and control those slight miss hits on the club face. And then as always, we've got that wave technology. You can see just sat on the sole, just behind the club face, those little grooves there, helping that flexing on those low strike hits. And then we've got this beta titanium face, which is again got like a cortex design behind it so different thicknesses behind the club face across it again trying to create as many hot spots on that club face as we possibly can trying to increase that ball speed across the entire club face sits amazing behind the goal golf ball i think this is a really good looking classy looking quality looking driver oh that's lovely that is really nice really enjoying hitting that Feel like I'm getting some good numbers. That wasn't the quickest there, to be honest. But the launch again, 13, spin around that 2000 to 80 carry. Right, okay, so just switching the shaft over. Now, just for interest there, if anybody wants to know what shaft I've got in here, is the Hazardous Smoke RDX 6.5 in a 60 gram. Typically my sort of area that I would play. So moving the X head now into that shaft. Now the X head only comes in a 10.5 and, and a 12 degree. So I've got this obviously 10.5. I've lofted this down to 9.5, which is typically my sort of loft. So when I sit that down by the golf ball, it looks pretty identical to what we've seen from that playing position. Head shape, everything like that. As I mentioned, that small little X logo now is positioned in the heel. Maybe just indicating that weight is in the heel. I quite, I quite like the way they've done that. Flipping the club over and look at the bottom of the club, again, very, very similar. The big difference here now is that weight, 20 gram weight is now positioned slightly into the heel section of the golf club. Obviously gonna create a little bit more of that draw bias. So Mizuno is saying this is a little bit higher launching, a little bit higher spinning, and obviously a little bit more of a draw bias for the player who would need that little bit of help. Oh my life, I've absolutely ripped that straight as an arrow. Feels so good off the club face. Really good. I'm just going to quickly move this back to a 10.5. I know this isn't my loft, but obviously just lofting it down can just change that face angle because that to me sits incredibly square down by that golf ball. So let me just move this back to that standard loft, which is obviously going to be 10.5. I think if you're sort of really struggling, maybe with that right miss as a right-handed goal for that fade, that over slice possibly, then you know, you've got that draw help, but also you've got the added benefit of the upright lie options in the next sleeve. So just remember that as well as, you know, when you're in, the, in that fitting environment, you fit to sort of, sort, of, sort of point that out to you, but again, the uprightness could obviously help to reduce that right miss. So now, as I sit that down before golf ball, that just looks to me, to my eye, just sitting a fraction more closed now, a little bit towed in, which again, is gonna help that golf, who needs that? Oh, God, that's really good. I think acoustic sounds on that, it just sounds a little bit louder than the, than the Z in the 220. Probably just prefer the, the Z sound, a little bit more muted. That's just a little bit more tinnier. And I'm talking fractions here, but again, some great numbers there. So just looking at that number out of interest there, obviously I've got my delivery up on the screen. So you can see my club path there was minus one degree. So out to win one degree, very low number. Uh, path there you can see, sorry, face to path you can see 1.6 positive number, which is open. So that's where I'm probably just counteracting a little bit that draw bias by having my club face a little bit more open to path. Yet that flew absolutely straight as an arrow. You look at that spin axis, the bottom right number spin axis minus 0 0.7. I mean, that's just no tilt on that spin axis at all. So obviously if I get my club face closing or squaring up a little bit more, probably just gonna see that little bit, that right to left up that left hand side. Again, that's going to real test that forgiveness. That was again that like I hit with the um, the Z big toe strike. Look how straight that's gone. Oh, again, I'm just just hitting all these straight. <laughs> I mean, this is draw bias, but it's not. Uh, it's not definitely not working up the left for me. Okay, right, there's some shots. Let's go and check a few numbers out of those two drivers. Really nice looking drivers, sound great, look to be performing really well, but let's just go and check those numbers in a little bit more detail. Okay, so let's look at those numbers. So the bottom column here, where I've only, I've only named that as a driver, but that was the STZ220. Obviously we've got the X on the top, which is more the draw one. So look at the numbers there, you see two, just short 213, just over 213. So obviously very, very similar on that uh, club head speed. See ball speed wise, just getting a little bit more out of the, um, the Z 
version, 163. Obviously, that can be a little bit of that stride. Granted, I've hit a few more shots there, but really good sort of numbers that I typically see, sort of see in terms of that ball speed, you know, as an average. Obviously, when I get real good contacts, what's that 165? Again, very, very typical what I see. Launch good there, really good. 12.3, that's a good one for me. And I tend to throw an odd one into the nines, even sometimes an eight, more through my strike. But I've struck those really well, so that's a good number. And the spin really controlled there at 2,200 and a 281 carry. Some, some cracking numbers. Descent angle, mid-30s, which I've been looking for, and a decent smash at 145. Then moving into the X, draw biased. Didn't really see that, did we? Now, obviously, I did have that first shot that lofted down a little bit, moved it back up to that 10.5. Obviously, you can see a couple of launches got a little bit higher. A couple of toey strikes there, uh, but flew very, very straight. Very, very stable golf club. Now, obviously, we've got upright lies in there, maybe for the golf who really struggles that right miss. That could potentially sort of help to get that ball working a little bit more up that left-hand side. So availability-wise in these drivers, the Z comes in a 9.5, 10.5 in right hand, and left hand is 9.5 only. And then in the draw bias in the X is a 10.5 and a 12, but no left hand, unfortunately, in the X for, for you lefties out there. Post comments down below. Let me know your thoughts of the new Mizuno drivers of 2022. They're two really, really good drives. Definitely worth going and having a look at yourselves. Hope you enjoyed the video, and we'll catch up with you all very soon.